Hello, I'm Bernie Hayes. Today's guest is Robert Ketchins. He's a fine artist. We'll be talking about art today on The Bernie Hayes Show. I'm Bernie Hayes. Uh, introduce my guest is a fine artist, Robert Ketchins. Robert, how are you doing? I'm great, Bernie. Thanks for having me. But what is a fine artist? Fine artist is a, is an artist whose focus is uh, primarily uh, deep thoughts. Mm -hmm. uh, primarily, uh, for me, um, things that should be said. Yeah. Uh, Outside of illustrations, you okay. know, illustrations for advertising and and getting a particular point across, but fine art is more about an opinion mm -hmm. that an artist is expressing. Okay, so this is when you put your stuff on canvas or draw it on paper. It's, it's more or less an expression of Robert Ketchins. Absolutely. Okay, Absolutely. that's good. Yeah. You know, in the background here, I, I see that beautiful picture, man. I see a lady carrying cotton on her head, and I see Robert Johnson at the crossroads. Tell us what that art's about right there. Well, that painting is uh, part of a series that uh, I worked on called uh, Song from the Field, mm -hmm. and uh, went down uh, to the Mississippi Delta uh, following the, the blues players, mm -hmm. found out what, what inspired them uh, to, be, uh, to be musicians and also to, to lead their home. Mm -hmm. uh, for better, better uh, opportunities, and um, it was a rough life, uh, and it was a story that had been told several times before. Sure. But uh, I thought that uh, my slant on the story was important. Say that personals. Yes, personal. Okay, uh, he just showed a song from the field. It says Clarksdale, Mississippi. Why, why did you find out when you went there, Robert? Well. Uh, Clarksdale, I'm really from New Orleans, so I'm, mm -hmm. I'm familiar with the Delta sure. and uh, you know, have people in the Delta. So um, I was attracted to uh, 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 just the culture uh, of the Delta, you know, the way things smell, mm -hmm. the, the, the people down there, just, it's just so familiar. <clears throat> and it was something that I thought, once again, I thought was important enough uh, to put on canvas. Okay. Um, as a fine artist, what you feel, what your opinion is, is for me the purpose of, of doing art. Okay. Um, uh, my one voice could possibly change things. Uh, for the better. For the better. <laughs> okay. Absolutely. Now, you know, the book, A Song from the Field. Tell us about the book. Bob had it up on the screen there a minute ago. Tell us what's in the book. <clears throat> okay, the, the book is uh, composed of uh, artwork that uh, myself and uh, fellow St. Louis artist uh, William Burton Jr. Uh, put together uh, with our travels down to the Mississippi Delta. Uh, we traveled through uh, Clarksdale, uh, Cleveland, um, um, Ida. I think it was where B.B. King was from. In Enola. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and all of those little towns <clears throat> claim to be the place where the blues were, yeah. were born. <laughs> yeah. One, so, yeah. you know, there's, there's this rivalry. The roll, rolling forth of Muddy Waters. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. So it's just an interesting part of our culture. Yeah. Um, because if you look back, all the music that America is enjoying right now, you can trace it back to the blues. Of course. Well, we, W.C. Fields, uh, supposed to be W.C. Handy, I mean, W.C. Handy, you know, supposed to be father of the St. Louis Blues. Yes. And uh, he says uh, what he experienced when he went through the, through the Delta was just totally some different, mm. you know, and that, that's how the blues came about. Mm. You know, we have a display that uh, that uh, the first blues came over on the slave ships, man. Yeah. And they were born in those, those, those holes. Yeah. And that, but that was the blues. Yes. We have some more of your, 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 your paintings. And, and, oh, but these, are these called paintings or what? Yeah, they're, they're paintings. Paintings. Okay, Bob's going to show us something. T t tell us what this is. 
Uh, now that uh, that's a, a little princess, mm -hmm. and uh, what I intended to show was the uh, assimilation of the African American community into European mm -hmm. uh, uh, areas, such as the, as the ballet. Right. And um, uh, I'm a, a, a lover of uh, old art, and uh, Degas is one of my favorites, okay. so uh, I was attracted to that subject, to tell that story through, uh, through that point of view. Well, that's, that's wonderful. Uh, she, she was the, so who was the subject? The subject was the uh, um, uh, integration mm -hmm. uh, and assimilation of European culture okay. with our African uh, backgrounds. Who was the model? The model, uh, I don't know the model's name. Uh, uh, she's just one of the uh, people that I go around and I, I take photographs, mm -hmm. ask them well, if I can take photographs. They seem well, interesting great. and they fit the, the, the subject that I'm trying to express. So. That's beautiful. Let's see what the next one is. Tell us about this one. And that's that's so one's, beautiful. That one's called Buddies. Um, uh, the one buddy's coming home. Uh, after a successful career, he's got his fancy uh, uh, jacket on, and his uh, his buddy is welcoming welcoming him home. Mm -hmm. um, it talks about uh, the need sometimes to refresh yourself, okay. uh, to go someplace else, uh, to make uh, your dreams come true. How long does it take to paint uh, something like that? We just want. So, I mean, I guess it varies in each one, right? Oh, absolutely, it yeah. varies, well, yeah. Do, 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 are they quick or long? Uh, I wish they were all quick. <laughs> <laughs> well, about how long would it take? But say, say the last one we just saw, Buddies, how long did that take you? Now, uh, uh, Buddy was a redo oh. uh, from, from a painting that I did oh, probably 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. um, I did it in a more monochromatic style. Okay. And uh, since then, I've changed uh, to where I've added addition of, of color and emphasis in color. And the foreheads, if you noticed, uh, are blue okay. and uh, reflect the light. So exaggerations are part wow. of that painting. That's wonderful. That's great. Let's see what the next one might be. Let's talk about that one. Who is it? Oh, beautiful. Beautiful. Who is she? Yeah, that's uh, Isabel uh, Monroe. She was a young lady that I met in Ferguson uh, right after the, the riots and mm -hmm. all that went on. And uh, she posed for me uh, on a corner where, where the library is. Mm -hmm. And uh, her and uh, several other young people uh, posed for me throughout maybe two, three weeks. I went out there and set up. I uh, give them five dollars, and yeah, they were sit. So, but I would ask them their opinion, sure. you know, about what went on and mm -hmm. how they feel about it. And out of the mouth of the babes, as they say, you know, yeah. some weird and powerful stuff. So, Certainly. you know, I intend to go back and uh, hopefully find some of the kids and uh, do them now and get their opinions about life. Oh wow! Is it progress? Huh? Yes, some sort of yeah, progress. That's yeah, that's wonderful. Well, you know, uh, Bob, what inspired you to become an artist? Um, my older brother uh, would draw cartoons from, uh, from the Sunday paper, and mm -hmm. I would emulate that. Mm -hmm. um, I went to the military and uh, was a, a mechanic for the first two years, and I knew I was on my way to Vietnam <clears throat> and being a mechanic. In Army? Uh, Air Force. Air Force, okay. Yeah. And uh, so I looked around and I tried to find something that I could do as a desk job, uh, mm. to de be a desk jockey instead of going <laughs> overseas. Yeah. So uh, a graphic artist was open. <clears throat> so um, I jumped in that. I was lucky enough that they accepted me and started my career from there. That's wonderful. Uh, did okay. two, two years there and then I cross-trained uh, to become a medical illustrator. Okay. And that's how I finished my career with the Air Force. Great. My guess is Robert Ketchin, he's a, he calls us a fine artist. And I think fine is not a word to describe him. He's much more than fine. He's, he's fabulous. <laughs> but we're at the New Life Evangelistic Center, 24, 28 Woodson Road in Overland, Missouri, where Reverend Larry Rice has been here for more than 51 years, helping those in need. And we still need your help and support. 
We'll be right back with Robert Kitchens after this. This is an opportunity that God has given all of us at this time to work together to reopen 1411 Locust, which is so urgently needed at this community. I thank God for uh, Bernie Hayes and for his support and standing with us all these particular years. Now it's so critical that you and I do our part also, as Bernie's been partnering with us here at, at NLEC TV, we've continued to maintain the faith, continue to move forward, and now we need some miracles. And that's why I'm asking all of you prayer warriors out there, all of you that are going to use that mustard seed of faith to remove the mountains, there's some mountains, rich and powerful people who move back in the neighborhood and they don't want 1411 locusts to open. They'd rather leave the people out on the street to slowly die, starved, used, misused, worked over by drug dealers, alcohol, and everything else. We want this place to be a place of hope for those that have lost all hope. And we want to open the doors, and we can do it. As you prayer warriors, go to God in earnest prayer, knocking on the doors of heaven. When he says, ask, it shall be given you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. Please continue to pray. Pray that God will just let the, the financial resources come in so we can make all of these repairs. He'll raise up the dedicated labors for the harvest that we will continue to see him do exceedingly abundantly beyond what we can even ask or think. Yes, this is a spiritual battle. The principality and powers are fighting from every direction, but greater is he who's in us than he that's in the world. And that's why I'm asking all of you to join us in prayer. Believe God with us. Contact us at New Life Evangelistic Center. If you believe that there's people God laid on your heart that we should see, ask for myself, Larry Rice, or my grandson, Chris Aaron Rice, that we can go visit and share the dream with you and call us at 314-421-3020. Please pray. Get involved now. We need the body of Christ to arise as we work together to reopen this building for the glory of God. Welcome back. My guest is Robert A. Ketchins. He's an artist, and uh, we've seen so wonderful uh, of us, some, some of his wonderful works. And uh, now there's uh, another picture in the background, if you notice, and it's uh, all about, that's, that's looking like Lightning Hopkins sitting in the chair there. Yeah. Tell us about that, that painting there. Blues Trail, Mississippi Blues Trail. What is that? Yeah, that, uh, that's a, a summation of mm -hmm. the, the trip that uh, we made down there with Songs of the Fields where um, some of these local uh, musicians, uh, they would take on the persona of being bigger than they actually were mm -hmm. in the entertainment industry and all the young ladies around would, you know, gather and, and be attracted to them. And um, then I put in the background some of the... <clears throat> the old blues guys, uh, yeah, that, uh, Lee Hooker, Hooker, yeah, back there. And, Hooker, uh, yeah. and then um, the blues originally originated uh, through the influences of Africa. So the young lady in the front uh, is picking, uh, picking seashells. And uh, <clears throat> wow, well, that's amazing. And, and this is a uh, Morgan Freeman. Place, yes, say, yes, the Morgan Freeman there. place down in Clarksdale. Mm -hmm. Yeah, some wonderful cooks. Wow, wonderful cooks, great mm -hmm. people. Yeah, Morgan uh, is actually keeping the blues alive too with his club. Yes, a lot yes. of live musicians going down there and playing. Yes, he is. This is wonderful, yes, great. Is. Let's see our next guy. Uh, tell us about this next photo here. Tell us about that. He looks so real. Look like if we try to touch him. Yeah, thank you. Um, this was another uh, young guy from uh, Ferguson, and um, he wore uh, the events differently uh, in his emotional state, and mm -hmm. uh, I was excited to, to capture that at the time. <clears throat> I think he was, uh, he was about to swell up and cry at the time wow. um, that I took the photograph of him. and. Uh, I did a few pencil sketches, uh, but mostly for the painting, I relied on the uh, on the photographs that I took. Mm -hmm. Are any of these photographs for sale, Bob? Any of these? <clears throat> the paintings are for sale. Paintings absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. How will we reach you and get and buy one? Um, How can we reach you? Get I've you. got uh, uh, a website, uh, robertketchens.com, uh, also uh, raketchens uh, at hotmail.com, or you can call me at uh, 314. Seven nine two five two nine nine. Okay, say that a little bit slower for us. Call me at three one four seven nine two 
1-800-242-5299 or email me at Robert R A Ketchens at hotmail dot com. Okay, and we're gonna. These are affordable. They're all affordable. Yes, um, okay. I'm also represented by uh, Blackbird Gallery uh, in Detroit, Michigan. Okay, so Blackberry Gallery. Work. Blackbird Gallery. Blackbird Gallery. Blackbird. Is that just yes. one word or two words? One word. One word. Blackbird. B Y R D or B I R D. B I R D. Yeah, Blackbird. Yeah, Blackbird Gallery. Yeah, I'm run by sure. a wonderful lady up there who's uh, who's an artist in her own right. In Detroit. In Detroit. Okay. Yes. All right. Yes. Okay. You, I mean, I'm just fascinated with the things that you do. Um, how do you di distinguish what colors you're going to use and, and you know, how you mix them? And how, how long does it take to do that? And how do you, do you have to go with a lot of experimentation? Yeah. <laughs> well, it's a, it's, it's a long process, mm -hmm. Bernie. Uh, when I first started uh, painting fine art, I was in uh, Wiesbaden, Germany. And uh, I worked uh, with physicians in the evening, so during the daytime I had free time, and mm -hmm. um, there was a local painter who was uh, teaching Americans that was over in Wiesbaden, Germany. So I joined this little group, and uh, the way he painted was to do everything in black and white, okay. and then you add color on top, much like the old masters. Yeah. Well, throughout my education, going to different museums, I saw falling in love with different artists and I uh, found myself more attracted to color. And uh, I, I think it has a lot to do with me being from New Orleans. As mm -hmm. you know, you know, we have purple and yellow houses, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. and orange houses with purple trim, you know. Sure. So uh, color is not is very familiar with me. Yeah, so um, most of it is instinctive. You know, mm -hmm. I'll start. Uh, uh, I'll start with a color, and I'll go just the opposite. If it's a warm color, I start with red. I'll make sure that I add some green to it. Mm -hmm. So, um, color-wise, I'm into complementary colors, uh, contrasting colors, and just enjoy color. <laughs> color can can change a person's mood, can it not? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Um, and, and I use color a lot in my work to, to provoke different moods and feelings. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, so the color will attract a viewer's attention long before the detail. So my paintings are more color than they are detail. Okay, tell us about this one here. Uh, this was from a discussion I had with a good friend of mine and... Uh, uh, we talked about uh, people in the church, and it was almost as though if you were in the church, you had cover mm -hmm. uh, from sin. And so that piece, uh, I titled it and I painted it called Sinners in the Church Pew. Oh, wow. <laughs> so, sinners in the Church Pew. <laughs> yeah, Sinners in the Church Pew. Yeah. Okay. I, I, I see you are very emotional about your paintings, too. Uh, Tell us how that uh, energy generates. Well, my my paintings are are, are my children. Like um, mm -hmm. the, there's so much a part of me that I can't imagine uh, doing anything else. Um, uh, when I need to uh, get away, when I need to say something, <clears throat> um, when I need to be entertained, art is always there for me. Wow! So That's I. Cool. Um, yeah, I'm very, very attached to my work. Uh, I don't rush it. Uh, I make sure that my subjects are worthy of being told. Um, I don't like frivolous paintings uh, that artists call themselves artists. Mm -hmm. And it's decoration more than it's fine art to okay. me. You know, if you don't have something to say, then you know, it's classified as design and move uh, on, right? Okay. Yeah. Well, tell us about this promise that was made to us that we never got. Uh, this one, 40 acres and a mule. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that's our, that's our age-old promise, right? Yeah. Uh, 40, uh, 40 acres and a mule. And again, the, uh, the focus to me was the, the expansive and emptiness of, uh, of the, the land uh, that he was plowing. Um, also, uh, replicate the unkept promise, uh, the expansiveness, mm -hmm. um, the odd color of the sun, um, the same thing with the, with the clouds. 
you know, these things are unrealistic. And they're just as unrealistic as the 40 acres and the mule. The promise, promise that was never yeah. made. Absolutely. You know, uh, th were you surprised? Well, I'm mean, from New Orleans. I, I guess, is New Orleans considered part of the Delta? Say it again. Is, that, is New Orleans considered in the Delta? I'll ask you that when we come back. We're going to take a short it's, break. <clears throat> but uh, so much more I want to talk to you about. Okay. But we only have about five minutes left. But anyway, we're at the New Life Evangelistic Center, 2428 Woodson Road at Overland, Missouri. And you know you can help Reverend Rice and the other workers here and volunteers at the New Life Evangelistic Center by coming by, bringing some food, bringing some water, bringing some needs that the, those in need need. 2428 Woodson Road, Overland, Overland, Missouri, 63114. Back with Bob Ketchens after this. It takes many partners to operate New Life Evangelistic Center. We're a large ministry operating and, and serving so many people all throughout Missouri. And so we appreciate so much Bernie Hayes and his many years of dedicated service to people who are experiencing homelessness all throughout Missouri. But we need people like you to partner with Bernie Hayes and with New Life Evangelistic Center to make a real impact in the lives of people who are hurting now. In a very practical way, you are being the hands and feet of Christ in the streets of St. Louis and Springfield, Missouri and beyond. So I want to thank everyone who is partnering with New Life Evangelistic Center. I want to challenge you to get involved today for the glory of God and the good of others in our community. Thank you so much, and God bless those who are making a big impact on the lives of hurting people. Richard Wright, writer and poet, born on September the 4th, 1908 in Roxy, Mississippi, and published his first story at the age of 16. In 1938, Wright published Uncle Tom's Children, a collection of four stories that mark a significant point in his career. The stories in it up winding him a $500 story magazine prize that led to the Guggenheim Fellowship. More acclaim followed in 1940 with the publication of His Native Son, which told the story of a 20-year-old African-American male, Bigger Thomas. The book brought Wright frame and freedom to write Black Boy. In 1945, Wright published Black Boy, which offered a moving account of his childhood and youth in the South. It also depicts extreme poverty in his accounts of racial violence against blacks. Black boy. Wright died in Paris, France, November 28, 1960. Richard Wright. These are very difficult times and so many people are giving up. I want you to experience hope in the midst of God's cathedral of creation. And that's why I have a free book that I want to send you. It said hope can begin to flow in your life and you'll be encouraged to go out in the middle of creation and hear the birds and the trees and all of creation speak hope to you. And I'll send this to you absolutely free of charge. All you have to do is just write me Larry Rice at P.O. Box 473, St. Louis, Missouri. That's 63166. Or you can call 314-421-302 and request your free copy of Experiencing Hope in God's Creation. We need hope right now. And hope is just right there, ready to fill you. You may be in a dark, dirty, lonely place at this moment. I have a whole chapter on that, how seeds are planted there and how they sprout. That and much more right here. Just write me at P.O. Box 473, St. Louis, Missouri. That's 63166. And receive your free copy. Welcome back. I'm Bernie Hayes. My guest is Robert Ketchens. He's an artist, a fine artist. Robert, uh, you're from New Orleans, but... Uh, when you got the Clarksdale and all the other cities in the Delta, were you surprised at how flat the land was? Uh, not really. It's for because, farming, yeah. Yeah, uh, uh, New Orleans is, is just as flat. Is it? Yeah, just as flat. In fact, New Orleans is, is much like a, like a big saucer mm -hmm. um, where you've got the, the river and all is at a high level than the, the land itself. Yeah. Yeah, so New Orleans is in the bottom of that salsa. Yeah, no, it's but below sea level, isn't it? It's New Orleans. It's what? I'm sorry. Below sea level. Yes, it is. Yes, it yes, is. So yes, it that's is. why they got to bury everybody above ground. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they don't want the bodies floating around in, in, the, in the sea. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, and once again, the song from the field is this, this wonderful book that you have. Uh, tell us about it again, how we can get it. 
Okay, the, uh, the book is, uh, was part of an exhibit uh, that we, uh, we put on at uh, CIMO, mm -hmm. and, and um, uh, the book is, uh, is for sale uh, when I, I have shows, exhibit okay. uh, uh, my work, and uh, it's the love of, uh, the results of love that William Burton and myself had okay. for, for that part of uh, the other country and and the things that it it generated for our people. Uh, so yeah, it, it has a special place for me. When you go into someone's home that bought some of your paintings and you see it on the wall or wherever it's displayed, does it, how does it make you feel? It it makes me feel good. It makes me feel good about mm -hmm. the the individual who bought it, and mm -hmm. not because of the monetary value, but because they got it. They mm -hmm. they understood what I was. The message I was trying to get across. And you were saying the importance of history. Tell us about what, what, what you told me about how important it is to save our history. About history? Yeah, about saving our history. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I feel that uh, uh, part of an artist's job mm -hmm. um, is to make sure that you leave uh, a footprint. Um, when we we look at archaeologists and you know they find in remnants of statues and all that sure. that's art that's you know some artists created that mm -hmm. and that talked about the culture th that was there so for me it's important that I don't make pretty paintings I want to make impactful paintings paintings that will tell our story mm -hmm. about our people and uh, the good, the bad, and the ugly, uh, the, comp the contributions um, that has never been spoken uh, about. Uh, I want to find those unsung heroes and uh, give them their space. So you want to paint the truth regardless whether it's whatever, whatever it is, uh, good or bad, you want the truth. Absolutely. Told. Absolutely. Okay, and that reflects in your paintings. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the truth is... is is critical uh, in artwork because if you're trying to express uh, uh, something that that you emotionally tied into, then there's no better way to tap into that than with the truth, mm -hmm. where, whether it rides you well or not. Um, but it's yeah, it's important. Okay. People can sense uh, that paintings and, and artwork aren't genuine. And these pictures and artwork is for sale right now. And once again, uh, Robert Ketchins, tell us how we can get to you, get the paintings and so forth, and how soon could they be delivered if they, they ordered one? All right. Well, uh -huh. we can deliver them as early as uh, this afternoon, if you like. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, my website is uh, raketchins.com, uh, and uh, you can email me at uh, raketchins at hotmail.com. And phone number? Yeah, phone number is 314-792-5299. Okay, and you can, if they want to call and order one of these pictures, they can call you up and, and say, Mr. Ketchins, I want one of these pictures today? Absolutely. Oh, that's yeah, absolutely. Right. That's yeah. wonderful, Bob. I just can't tell you how much I appreciate you being here and how, and how much I've enjoyed talking to you and seeing what you do. The, the book is just fantastic, a song from the field. Uh, it, it's just un, unbelievable, and the artwork that's in there. It's just, uh, it's just beautiful. So between you and William Burton and Robert Ketchins, a song from the field, it's, uh, everyone should have it, I think. And thank I just want to thank you for being here with us. Thank you very much for having me, Brian. It's been a pleasure. Thanks each and every one of you also for supporting Reverend Larry Rice, who's been here more than 51 years, not at this location, but we're trying to get back to 1411 Locust Street. But in the meantime, we're 24, 28, Woodson Road, in Overland, Missouri, 631 one four. I'm Bernie Hayes. Thank you for coming. Thank you for watching. Thank you for supporting.